to Luca here. I have been a very busy bee getting ready for my auction, which will be this Friday right here on YouTube, October 7th at 7 p.m. Eastern. Uh, there are two videos up of um, previews of the auction pieces, and I've also put pictures of the paintings that will be up for auction on my uh, Facebook page, The Glassy Knoll. So check that out. Uh, but of course, the video is better because you get to see all of the bling uh, and the paintings, which you can't really see in a photograph. So um, do check those out. Hopefully I'll see some of y'all there. Um, so I'm going to be doing, uh, I did that, what I called the double blossom pour, which was kind of, um, it was an air swipe or Dutch pour or whatever you want to call it. Uh, and then there was another one in the center. And then I did a, a center that looks kind of like a rose. Oh, I'll show you. This. This thing. This gorgeous thing. The interference paints look amazing. I cannot wait to see this varnished. So I'm going to be uh, doing something like this. Uh, will it be exactly like that? Probably not. We'll see what happens. I'm going to go with what the paints give me. The colors I am using today. Uh, I did my edge in the prism pour color uh this is dark waters and if i can get it to flash so you can see what that color is i put some of the paint on the lid because it does have a tendency to dry very differently so uh once you add a pouring medium to it uh depending on the pouring medium but especially mix or flow trawl uh it the pouring medium appears white. And so when you add it to a paint, it brightens that paint. Um, it might hide the pigments. So you really don't know what it's going to look like when it's dry. Um, you can get an idea by doing what I did here. So for instance, this is French silk. This is a gold, like a very, very soft gold color. But in the cup, it does not appear gold at all. It just looks white. But you can actually kind of see on the stick, further up on the stick, maybe you can see it, maybe you can't. But it does dry more gold. So the painting will probably appear very different wet than it does dry. So it's good to have, you know, if something does have a tendency to change a lot, it's a good thing to have yourself little swatches like this so you know what it will look like once it's dry. For my background base coat color, I have a mix of uh, Liquitex Basics and Thalo Blue, Thalo Green, and just a touch of titanium white to brighten it up a little bit because that would be very, very dark. So I wanted it to have a bit more, uh, a bit more brightness to it. Um, and then I have uh, this little piggy in Nightfall, the beautiful purple color. And in McCall, which is a gorgeous interference, um, kind of a greenish interference. And again, this is the Prism Pour by Color Art in Dark Waters and in French Silk. I have mixed these with mixed pouring medium and only mixed pouring medium. Uh, if it needed some a couple of drops of water, I added that so the the base coat slash background color needed some water because that is a much thicker paint. Um, the pigments are just the mix, and the prism pores have like two drops of water in it. Uh, to get yourself some mix pouring medium, email Krista 
8974 at gmail.com. I always have to look because I'm afraid I'm going to transpose those numbers. Uh, so Krista8974 at gmail.com. And uh, check out the description box below for coupon codes for uh, the Color Art Prism Pour if you wanted to get yourself some of those. And of course, uh, all my other affiliates, uh, Deco Art and uh, Arteza bunch of coupon codes and, and affiliate links in the description box. The consistency that we're working with today is about a two. Oh, that's going to be dark. It's going to be so hard to see. I don't know that any of the other colors are going to be easier. Is there a way that I can tilt so you can see better? It doesn't appear to be that way. I have got to get this lighting situation figured out. But so this is about a two on my consistency scale, maybe a one and a half. It does make a mound, but it disappears very quickly. You want to make sure that the paint is making a nice thin stream on your stick. Nice even stream. I got a little bit of a little bit of unevenness in here, so I might need to mix it up a little bit more. I did just add some water to it because it got thickened a bit. The sauce may thicken upon standing, but this is the consistency we're working with. I don't think you're going to be able to see that at all. Before we get started, have you seen the Fluid Art Inspiration Cards? If you have, you can fast forward about a minute, but if you have not, what we have are 52 cards. There are 42 technique cards, and each technique card has an associated video here on YouTube that gives you all of the information that you need, the exact paint brand, color, consistency, the recipe, and of course the technique, all of the stuff that I can't fit on these cards. This is the picture of the painting in that particular video. This box here contains a tip for that technique and here at the bottom we have the color palette that was used in that particular painting. These two boxes can be used together as the basis of a two color palette or you can build off of those colors. There are also eight bonus color palette cards. Each one has five color palettes. You can use all of the colors or just some of the colors. Mix and match the bonus color palette cards with the technique cards and you will have more combinations than you could ever paint in a lifetime. These are available at my website, GinaDeLuca.net and also at Amazon.com. Okay, the first thing I'm going to do is lay down my base coat. Yes, I know it's weird that uh, my I've painted my edges a different color. I'm not worried about it. I'm not mad if that color shows through. The reason I did that, uh, the color that uh, I had originally mixed for my background was a bit dark. I added the white to it but that was after I had already added my pouring medium and I wanted better coverage. So I just used the prism pour straight out of the bottle. I will not be mad if I get some uh, of that green showing through. Okay, now to cover the edges, I usually just take some of my color and put it on my little spatula and rub the sides this way because these little pleats on the side make it very difficult to get a smooth coverage, get those sides nice and primed so that your paints will slide easily over it. If the sides are dry. If you have dry spots, the paint might not uh, flow very easily over the side. And you kind of want that, right? So, it is very important to cover your sides 
and being extra diligent when uh, you have these round canvases because there are little puckers or pleats or whatever you want to call it. Not quite pleats, but definitely puckers on the sides. That is just the nature of how the canvas gets wrapped around around substrate. Okay, my base coat is down and I'm going to pop any bubbles that may be in my base coat. it around I did not like what what happened so I just kind of blended it all together that's the nice thing about using colors that uh, go together you can just do that and you don't get mud it would this would actually probably be really pretty if I just let it dry like this uh, so let's start over I am going to be using more interference because it was just not enough contrast last time. So I don't know if I will show the last part. I worked at it for quite some time and did not get what I was looking for. I don't know if I want to make you guys sit sit through that. It wasn't necessarily educational or fun. So don't know that I want to make you guys sit through that. Just me trying to make things happen. So I was not getting enough contrast before. So I'm just adding some more interference than I did last time. Less green, the green really took over. Now I'll take a little bit of the blue PSI set to 35 and I'm just going to bring this blue in over top. Oop, that didn't work. All right, and now I'm going to blow it out. 
pray for a better outcome. Find my skewer, and I'm just going. Oh, get that hair off of there. Just going to drag this towards the center. Not all the way into the center, just towards the center. Just to give those petals some definition. Give this a spin. that I can push it over that any further. My work surface is not level and so this makes this part challenging. Wee bit more. Okay, now for round two. Just the tiniest bit of green. Okay, actually do a little dot of the purple. Okay, now I'm going to blow. So my petal line is here, so I'm going to blow into that petal line.
again, I will do my petal lines. You kind of work with what's going on there already. Don't necessarily have to create all new lines. Give this a little bit of a spin, just a bit. And I will take some of the interference paint and give myself some little stamens. Don't necessarily love the placement of that one. So I'm going to pick it up <laughs> and put it back. Same with this one. See how easy that is? Okay, I'm gonna leave this alone. Um, I think this is probably gonna dry really pretty. I mean, these colors are really pretty together. This this blue is going to dry darker than what it is. And uh, I don't know, I guess we'll find out. But I'm not, uh, I don't know. We'll see. I'm going to reserve judgment. <laughs> Unfortunately, you guys aren't going to see it dry today, but uh, I will certainly show it dry in the next video um, and possibly the, during the auction. It should be dry by then, I think. But uh, yeah. So I'm just gonna let this sit for a minute and I will bring you in for a close up back in a few. Okay, here it is. Let's see if I can get that shimmer. So originally the background would have had no shimmer but because I scraped that first one, um, and it all blended together. It made its own color, pretty color. So there's some of the phthalo blue green mix. And so that part won't be shimmery. So there will still be areas in there that don't have shimmer that will make the shimmer pop. But this is going to look very different when it dries. 
So I hope that got you guys to come back. Let's see how this dries. But it will surely be very pretty because these colors sure do sparkle. And then that's going to be that interference in the center. But there it is. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something. If you did, please do like, share, and subscribe and all that good stuff. Do check out the description box below for links to all of my affiliates. If you want to get yourself some of these goodies, check out the affiliate links and coupon codes down there in the description box. Uh, what else is in there? The link to my website, GinaDeLuca.net, where you can find my art and music and fluid art inspiration cards for sale. And also, you will find the link to... Our Facebook group, go make some art, join us there, post your masterpieces, ask your questions, get some inspiration. A good time is had by most. It is the internet after all. So I think that this is going to dry, you know, kind of have that kind of ghostly effect. I think maybe we'll see. Maybe this will be the ghost flower but uh stay tuned for the dried results come back in the next video i hope you all have a beautiful day now go make some art <laughs>